Spacey Sins, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite. And we finally got out of the dark pit of despair! And we're back in Celestia, because we hurt our foot and Raul pegged. God damn it, save her, because I love her. Well, he didn't say I love her, but, you know. He's basically said that. Like, I can't lose you. I don't want to lose you. That kind of thing. So it's kind of sweet. Anyway, it's so warm. And I feel like Minerva set this whole thing up, and she's like, just waiting. I feel like I'm swimming in cotton. The pain, the suffering, the anxiety, all gone. A hand touches my forehead. I bet it's Raoul. That's right. I need to wake up. Raoul must be worried sick. They didn't send him back, did they? He better be here. Mm. I open my eyes and wake myself up, only to be greeted by a sudden hug. Spacey! <laughs> it was Raoul. He's hugging me like he's trying to squeeze the air out of me. I'm so glad he's still here. But look at his sad eyes. He's so worried. Oh, baby, it's okay, sweetheart. I need to pet his precious head. I love him so much. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I thought I lost you. Thank goodness. Raoul embraces me with all his might as his body shook. Raoul, I can feel his warmth. I see. I'm alive. I touch my foot to confirm that it's been healed. I return to my divine form because I'm back in Celestia. My injuries are gone and death fled from me. But if I hadn't returned, I'm sure I would have died. I would never have felt the warmth from Raoul again. I'm so glad I'm alive. I hold onto Raoul's shoulder and try to catch a breath. The thought of dying and not being able to speak to him again is too much. If the tables were turned, then I probably would have been able to save him. Wouldn't have been able to save him. That was just how precious, or per that was just how precarious our situation was. The sense of relief weighs down on me, bringing tears enough to blur my vision. Raoul, thank you. We made it. Yeah, God saved us. <laughs> You're right. I'm sure that was Auntie back then. She did say she was watching over me when she spent her time looking over the human world. I bet she saw what happened and guided us out. We hold each other, crying. Slowly, the heat from his body subsides. Say, Spacey? Hmm? There's something I want to tell you on this... There's something I wanted to tell you on this trip. I actually had everything set up at the hotel we were supposed to be staying at in Greece. It was supposed to be a surprise with gifts and things, but... Guess that went down the drain. Oh my god, he set up a little romantic surprise for us, and then we got trapped in hell. Basically. <laughs> so, you mind if I tell you now? He lets go and looks right at me. It'd be rude for me to interrupt him now. All I do is nod in response. Yes? What is it? Raoul smiles and then rubs my cheek with his bruised fingers. I've never really fallen in love before, so I didn't know what this emotion inside me was. I would be irritated seeing you with another guy. I felt happy being with you and wouldn't have minded talking all day. It finally dawned on me when I spoke with that other girl. I was talking about myths and lore with her, but it just didn't feel right. There are things I can talk freely about with you. Then I found out you were Cupid, so I thought that was why things felt different. But that was wrong. You weren't special to me because you're a god. I was naturally happy being with you. Seeing you cheerful was all I wanted. I love him so much. He's so sweet. I'm gonna cry. He's such an innocent little puppy. God, oh, I love him. I was happy when you smiled, and I felt sad when you weren't around. Oh, who knew a himbo could hold your heart so tightly? You'd expect that. I should expect that, because they're himbos for a reason. I mean, they're very strong. <laughs> like, they're like, you know, are buff dumb boys. And yet, but like, ugh. It just holds my heart so tightly, but also gently. <laughs> uh, after you were relieved of your duty of being my personal advisor, I spent my time lazily every day without you in my life. I kept thinking about kissing you, and not just because I wanted to. My acting career went up a notch because of you. You're the one I fell in love with. Raul. Raul places his hand on my hand and looks straight into my eyes. His eyes are earnest, innocent, and gentle. His eyes are green, much like fresh leaves. Well, now they look green, but they kind of looked aqua, aqua before, but... His eyes look at me like someone who has never known love before. Inside his eyes... is me. Say, Raul? Hmm? It just turns out that I finally realized that I'm actually in love with you too, Raoul. 
What? So you can kiss me anytime, really. <laughs> That's so cute. He's like, so, like, all this thing, and you're like, yeah, I'm in love with you, too. And he's like, huh? Wasn't expecting that. He lets out a wide smile, seeing me smile. Suddenly, look at his blushy face. So cute. Do we get a CG? Oh, it's so beautiful. He gives me the most gentle kiss I've ever experienced. Look at this with our beautiful hair and like our cute little dress. Oh, in our little divine form. Oh, he's so sweet too. She looks really pretty. She's captivating this whole freaking. It's supposed to be about him. The CG is supposed to be about him, but she's captivating. She's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Okay. I will give them credit. She is beautiful in every CG. Even if she's like, oh, got a goofy face. It's cute. Like other games where you're like, oh, she's so beautiful in this CG. She kind of looks a little derpy in this CG. It's because the giant eyes, right? They're, and like, I think there have been a few games where like the main character actually looks good in all the CGs. This is one of them. Like she looks so good in all the CGs. So good. She might be one of my favorite MCs, I think. Because like, she's like, She's got her dirt moments, but they're kind of fun. You're like, <laughs> I get that. Cause I would absolutely be derpy like that in this situation. It's human derp, you know, where you're like, yep, I did something dumb. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Cause everybody does derpy shit, you know, not, wow, you are just really fucking stupid. I can't like, she does like kind of goofy derpy stuff, but she's like pretty spot on. And then she freaking sassed that woman with a knife. Like girl, <laughs> She's so entertaining and good. And she looks gorgeous in this fucking CG. I mean, Raul looks good too, but she looks better. I just, it's weird. <laughs> like, I'm not moaning. Celestia is warm, like we're in the midst of spring spe season. We share our love and joy together for the first time. I love you, Spacey. I love you too. Our fingers intertwine and our lips touch ever so gently, ever so sweetly. We've kissed before, but now that our feelings are one, this kiss is special. Raul, thank you for saving me. You can't imagine how happy I was when you treated me like a normal human girl. Not to mention your love for me as a god, too. There's no escape that I'm Cupid. But now he can love my heart, yearning to be human, and my body, that of which is a god's. So you're fine with me being a mytholo mythology nerd? That's part, part of what makes you special. Of course. I am part of mythology, after all. God of love, Cupid. Well, I don't recall doing any of the mythos of... The mythos of Cupid spoke... Well, I don't require doing anything the mythos of Cupid spoke... Oh, I get it. Well, I don't recall doing anything the mythos of Cupid spoke up. The mythos spoke up about Cupid. Okay, I get what it's saying. It just... It didn't come out right in my brain when I read it the first time. Anyway, I wouldn't mind making them real with him. Wasn't there a story where a god... Of a god falling in love with a human turns into one as well? Say, Raul, you don't mind whether I'm a god or not, right? Of course. I don't mind whether you're a god or a human. The person I fell in love with is you. He gently runs his fingers along my clothes and smiles. You look so cute in that. You're back to how you looked as a god because we're here, right? That's right. This is me as a god. You're really cute as usual. <laughs> Nothing about you changed. I love you as an advisor. I love you how you are now. And I also love you when you don't have anything on you. <laughs> of course! You're getting all romantic and then you say that. I mean, okay. I don't care if you're a god. I just want to bring you back with me. Or actually, to be human. So if you ever fight, you can't run back here again. <laughs> you're planning on having a fight with me? Come on, being together for life means that we're going to have our fair share of arguments. He's so, like, okay. For an idiot, he actually is kind of smart. But he is kind of stupid. But he's still smart sometimes. And it's when he does that, like, we're still going to have arguments because that's what people do. It happens. And you're like, wow. You know, if anybody else said that, you'd be like, yeah, no. But, like, when you say it, it's like, wow. That's so profound coming from a himbo. <laughs> it's because you're you. Anybody else, you'd be like, yeah, duh. <laughs> so I was thinking that I'd be out of options if you decide to one day return here after a few husband and wife fits. Is so cute. Husband and wife fits. Husband and wife fits. Those words alone are making my heart race with joy. Someone wants to actually walk alongside me, even though I'm a god. For all I care, you could be a human, a god, a demon, or even a monster. 
I really don't care who you are as long as you stay by my side. He smiles and kisses me again. I place my hand on his body and feel the heat coming from him with my fingertips. He's the, he's the one I fell in love with. The person who calls me by my name in a voice that I so dearly love. Same here, too. I can love you no matter who you are, Raoul. Raoul's played everything from an archaeologist to a king. I know I'll love him, even if he wasn't human, because I fell in love with his very soul. So beautiful. Yeah, we're gonna do great. I know we are! <laughs> I love you so much, you dumb himbo! Oh, you're so precious! Yes. I'm a god and he's a human. We know that already, so no matter what happens, we'll be fine. I feel like we just keep going in circles right now, for some reason. We wrap our fingers together again and kiss like a couple who found love for the very first time. I mean, kinda. I never knew how amazing it felt to have found one's true love and to be loved and returned by them. I never knew such a warm emotion existed. We kept kissing for as long as we could. After a while, I decided to show him my home. Or rather, Celestia. But then... Uh-oh. We're gonna fight Mars. Oh, shoot. I think I'm gonna puke from all the excitement. Raul crouches in a corner after scoping the area out. Um, are you okay? I I'm fine. No, wait. I'm not. I actually saw the real Neptune, you know? I, I never knew he used a weapon like that. That was so cool. Ugh, puke incoming! Please don't puke in here. Unbelievable. Obsessed Parasite is on full throttle. Think about it. I'm a human and I'm here in Celestia. If the gods find out I'm here, they may turn me into a constellation. I'm the cute. They could turn you into worse things. I doubt that would happen, but if Lord Jupiter did find you, he may erase your memory. Huh? Really? Here I was hoping to see Jupiter, too. Maybe I can disguise myself and act like a god. <laughs> I mean, you are an actor, but also... Raul, well, they're not going to be fooled by that. Mm, but you don't really have that aura that us gods have. I'd so love to stay here forever, but I know I shouldn't. I need to introduce myself to your parents, too. Boy, here comes the puke again. <laughs> and he's like... Oh, I love how he is, like, blushing, too. Come on! I rub Raoul's back as he crouches on the ground. Suddenly, I hear footsteps coming from behind. Oh my, you're awake! Lady Minerva? And there she is. Huh? Uh, you mean the god Minerva? The one who saved me from those oysters? I, I don't know, is she? Nice to see you two safe and sound. Thank goodness. Well, perfect timing. I went to your room, but you weren't there. Lady Minerva, you saved us back then, right? Thank you very much and... Huh? For some reason, Auntie has my bow and arrow in her hand. I quickly look at my chest to discover that my di divine artifact necklace is gone. Why do you have that with you, Auntie? I thought no one could take it off besides me. Well, yes. The rules of Celestia do say that only Cupid can remove it. But that rule only applies when Cupid has the right to be Cupid. Huh? Right to be Cupid? Cupid's the god of love, but if she falls in love with a human and seals their bond with a kiss, she's released from her role. I feel like Minerva's saying this very judgmentally. Oh, but it's actually just because she always has her eyes closed. You know, I never realized that, that we said that she's like, Minerva never has her eyes open. And then I was like, did she? No, I guess she really never does. Huh. So the time Minerva opens her eyes is going to be like when shit gets real and she stabs us. I've seen this game before. Listen, character who always has their eyes closed. You can't fool me. I've been down the St. Germain route. I know what happens. Characters who always have their eyes closed are sus. I still love her to death, though. I still kind of want to be her. I do kind of dress like her. Again, not with the midriff hanging out, because my midriff is, like, flabby and gross and, like, whatever. But, you know, if I had a body like that, I'd probably dress like that, because I'm crazy, so. <laughs> Think about it. How is someone in the midst of a love affair supposed to help others find love? She'd be too distracted, you know? I mean, how many stories about Cupid did you hear in the human realm that you'd never heard before? She's right. I was never teased by Apollo or ever fell in love with what happened uh, with what happened with Psyche. It really was strange. But the god answering the oddity is one of the DC. God of wisdom and war, Minerva. Unlike the DC, 
Cupid is actually a title that's passed down through generations of gods. There you go. What? You're kidding me. I, I simply assumed all those weird episodes about me were just made up by humans. But I was wrong. There were other Cupids before me. Wait a minute. Does that mean there really was a Cupid that pricked his finger on his own arrow? Uh, yes. And that one was a bit of a klutz, but he overcame all the trials pitted against him and became a human in the end. What? Th th that's amazing! Wow! This is a discovery of the century! Raul's eyes are gleaming with excitement. He's right in that this is the discovery of a cent- Is this is a discovery of the century. I see. The name Cupid is a title. Would you explain why Cupid was depicted differently between generations? No, wait. More importantly, that means she can live as a human, then. Uh, that's right. Which means, I'm not Cupid anymore? That's right. Congratulations, Myth's 87th Cupid. You are free now. 87th Cupid. Raul. Sweet, we can live together now. We hold each other's hands in joy. I can live with him in happiness now. Or so I thought. Huh? Huh? Suddenly, two arrows find their way into Raoul. The golden arrow and the leaden arrow. The two arrows have impaled Raoul's heart. What? I turn around and see my aunt with the bow in hand. Auntie? Uh, I've been waiting for this moment. When Cupid falls in love and Cupid's bow can find a new host to become Cupid. The exact moment when the bow is no rightful owner. Oh, her eyes are open. Oh! Oh, her eyes are open! Oh, shit! It's going down! I didn't think she was going to be evil. Raul's body made a kind of crackling sound and his body started to crumple. Raul falls to the ground and the two arrows slowly disappear. Although that is true, it's a good point. Because it's like, ha ha ha, we can be in love again. We still have like four or five chapters. We're not even at the end. So yeah, no, I'm not, I should not have been surprised that there was going to be like literally some backstabbing or front stabbing. Raul's face is pale as if his soul drifted away. Raul, Raul. I shake Raul, but he doesn't wake up. Oh my God, you just killed my boyfriend. Auntie, what did, what did you do to him? I returned him back to the way he used to be. What? As I pondered what she meant by that, Raoul slowly wakes himself up. <gasps> Was he Alexander the Great? <laughs> Is he not a human? Raoul, are you alright? I quickly try to hold him up when... Don't touch me, woman! Oh my god. I didn't... Okay, wow. Oh my god, this really- Okay, we were in the temple and there was all this weird shit happening and blah 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 and Minerva probably kind of set it up hopefully that we would fall in love with Raul and it was like, oh my god, this is kind of off the rails and then I thought that was- and then we just- we further fell off. I didn't think we could fall off the rails any further but here we fucking are. We flew off the fucking rocker off the rails. Holy shit. Huh? He slaps my hand coldly away. Raul's in front of me. But his eyes are cold like never before, as if he isn't the same person I know. Holy shit. Raoul? Raoul, who's that? I have a name and it's Alexander. Oh my god, that's fucking me! <laughs> there was kind of a part of me when he was like, oh, Alexander the Great, and he was talking about all this stuff, and you're like, that's a weird thing for you to be interested in in the midst of mythology, you know what I mean? But I was like... <laughs> Maybe Raul's secret is that, like, he's, like, immortal, and that's why he has that. Oh, my dad gave it to me. It was more like, that was mine. I, I'm fucking centuries old. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Alan is, you know, fucking forever old. So this is actually why they told you not to do Raul's route earlier than now, because if you knew Minerva was, like, psychopath, you know, like this, it kind of ruined all the rest of the routes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Game! This game is so good! Everything is so great! You think it's crazy, and you're like, we're at the crazy! We're at the apex of crazy, and it just keeps... It keeps climbing up that hill! Son of a bitch! Holy shit!
I have really high expectation of Alan and Jupiter's routes now. Like, fuck! Fuck! Fuck. Alexander! Auntie shivers in joy as she holds Raoul's... No. As she holds Alexander's hand. Ah! Finally! I've been waiting for forever to see you again, my great king, Alexander! Alexander? King? Who took my boyfriend away? Like Achilles' achievements during the Trojan War, but if I had to choose my favorite, it'd absolutely be, absolutely be Alexander the Great. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. I bet it's like his reincarnation or something, you know? Raul is Alexander the Great? What is going on here? I thought Alexander the Great was Macedonia's king and already... Yes, he passed away ages ago. A noble being lost to the sands of time. And he was also my one true love. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, this is terrible. Oh no. I've been waiting for the time of his return. I kept watch over the human realm from Celestia for thousands of years. I was waiting for Alexander's soul to return to the world, and I vowed to revive his personality from his reincarnated soul. And it just so happens to be our boyfriend, Raoul. The arrows that give and take love have a power that can overrun, overturn the rules of gods. They can even return the personalities of souls from the past to the present. I knew they held that power, so I've waited for my chance for millennia. I had to avoid killing Cupid on accident like last time. Huh? Kill Cupid? A shiver goes down my spine hearing her words. But does that mean... Is that why you were so nice to me? My mission for countless years has been to help you find love. Auntie smiles at me like usual and then grabs my neck. She slowly raises me up. Auntie isn't strong, but for some reason my body rose easily into the air, because you're not a god anymore. I struggle and kick with all my might as I grab Auntie's hands, but it doesn't budge her a bit. I mean, I know that this is like the god world, but like our mom, our dad, Jupiter... Nobody's fucking around? Nobody's here? Where the fuck is everybody? That's right. I keep forgetting that Auntie is the god of wisdom and war. She partook of in the Trojan War, too. Aunt Minerva... Now, now, my darling Cupid. What did I say about calling me that? Auntie's voice is the same as usual. Her usual tone and usual words. But now she's trying to kill me. Or at least she has her grip so hard that it's difficult to breathe. Oh, and don't worry. A new Cupid will be born in no time. So you can live your life as a human from now on. Consider it your retirement from godhood. She lets her grip go. There's no ground behind me. Auntie summoned a gate to the human world right behind my back. With nothing to hold me, the gate sucks me in. Bye-bye, Cubie! And best of luck to you! Lady Minerva! Raul! I extend my arm out, but the door suddenly closes. The world around me is white as I keep falling with my arms still extended. This would have been a really great bad ending. I'm just saying. I keep falling. This is really depressing. I know we're gonna get him back, but it's just sad. I'm on 2nd Avenue in Lost York. People are walking to and fro with cars driving along the street. Around me is the human culture that Auntie and I both love. Behold! The great creed by yours truly that leads to the human realm! Wow, 221B, isn't that the same as Shamrock Holmes? That's exactly right. I knew you'd get the reference, QB. Gosh, I used to be obsessed with that movie. The best aunt I could have ever had, the god Minerva. I gained an interest in the human world. I joined Cupid Corps. All of it was because of my aunt. She taught me, supported me, and deceived me which is why i came to the human realm so then you wonder in every other route when we're happy with somebody else she takes the bow and arrow and like stabs raul and then he's never seen or heard from again 
But this time, the only reason that it bothers us is because we're in love with Raul. And no, oh, she took my favorite himbo. Oh, why couldn't you have been in love with Gil? That's fine. He probably would have been better off that way, Minerva. But you can't take Raul. Although it makes absolute sense because, you know, he's obsessed with mythology and like, you know what I mean? But anyway. And it's here that I learned to love. Tears rolled down my cheeks. Auntie did all this to get her love back. And the person Auntie loved was the person with her love's soul. My love. And now your love's soul is gone. That's sad. Oh, wow. Whole new chapter, huh? Honors, decorations, magnificence. There was nothing I could do, so I dragged myself back home. Claris is going to be like, fuck that shit! I'm back. The room was cold with no one around. I was hoping Claris would be here. Not that seeing Claris now will help. Even if she cheers me up, the fact that I lost my divinity and my loved one doesn't change. Yes, I lost my divine artifact. Which means that there's no way for me to return to Celestia. Yeah, because the only way... I was like, go, go get Gil! And then I was like, right, the only way he got there was with the necklace. I sit on my bed with my head down. Can't believe how useless I am. I actually went to Raul's place earlier, but it's not like I have the key. So I tried calling for him with no luck. I then contacted his agent, but she told me she couldn't get in touch with Raul, too. I finally tried to contact the members at the Mythological Society, but they didn't have much they could help with. So here I am now. I have no other options left. What should I do? Is there anything I can do? Maybe I can go to some ruins that said to connect to Celestia. To think it was only a while back I didn't even believe in such a thing. But if there really was a way to get to Celestia, I'm sure more humans would have found their way there. I don't recall that ever happening before. Which means that there really is nothing I can do. I never knew Cupid was a title and it was something you could lose. No one told me that before. Not once had I heard about that. Everything that I learned back then was news to me. There are a lot of things that aren't known and kept secret among the DC. And again, they could let whoever involved know at least. Can't believe they made me make couples without telling me a thing. Cupid isn't some kind of tool, you know. Actually, by the way they're treating you, I would say you are a tool to them. I also have a problem with my mom and dad. I'm sure they saw other Cupids before. Maybe that's why dad was angry at me. Because he saw the marriage rates were low during my term. I bet the gods wanted me to become a human because I wasn't doing a good job in comparison to the other Cupids. That doesn't mean she can take away Raul, though. I cradle myself in frustration as tears begin to swell. I'm fine being human, but that was based on the premise that my loved one would be with me. But Raul was taken from me, and his personality was swapped too. My arrows made the Raul I knew disappear. But she isn't around too. I'm sure Chi hid beneath the bed before I left, but I can't seem to find him anywhere. You're not a god, so... Or maybe he left me because I'm not a god anymore. I thought maybe Chi might know a way to save Raul... But he was sent to me by Auntie, so maybe he was a spy all along. I think he was sent to you by Jupiter. Or is Jupiter. One or the other. You know what I mean. I'm a former Cupid turned human who doesn't know much about Celestia. It's not surprising that I don't know what else I can do now. She is such a meanie leaving me like this. The moment I mumble, I hear rustle, rustling coming from the closet. I look toward that direction to see a white, furry tail sticking out. Chi? I grab his tail. I then hear him bump his head in the closet. I dragged Chi out by his tail to discover him shaking, scared. Chi, thank goodness you're here. I'm so sorry, I thought you were a spy. So Chi, I need your help. I'm not a god anymore and I lost my divine artifact too. I need to save Raul and return him to how he was, but do you know how we can get to Celestia? Chi! -chi? Chi's eyes widen hearing my words. He then hurriedly flutters around me in circles. That was the most chi acting I've had to do. Chi's trying to tell me something. Not that I can tell what he's trying to say, though. What is it, Chi? What are you trying to tell me? Did Timmy fall down a well again, girl? Boy? <laughs> chi! Chi! 
She speeds out to the living room and presses the TV remote. I hold my breath as I see what's being televised. Tornadoes and storms are appearing all over the world. Oh, that sounds about right. Oh my god, what the fuck? Currently, abnormal weather is happening on a global scale, which is causing a lot of confusion. We have information that there's a tornado in Los York, a storm surge in Baltimore, and a hail is falling in Washington. All transportation is being affected. Skies around the world have also turned red. According to the National Weather Service, the... The is some... There is some relationship to the abnormal weather. Holy fuck! I quickly run outside after watching the news. I'm greeted with strong winds and a sky colored like never before. Chi! Chi jumps at the sight and speeds right back inside. I don't blame him. I would too. There's a tornado like a foot from you. All I'm doing now is looking at the sky in stupor. What in the world is going on? Minerva is causing some fucking damage. I walk outside to the street where crowds are gathering and worriedly looking at the sky. This is not the time! Everyone in... Okay, this is everyone in the Midwest in Tornado Alley when there's a tornado standing outside going, Yep, that's a big motherfucker! Drinking a beer. Everyone in the fucking South when there's a hurricane. Let me run outside. Holy shit! Yeah, this is crazy! Look at this crap! <laughs> We're not smart people. But I'm not really... Everyone's just standing there staring at the apocalypse. Oh, you want to be like, what the fuck, people? No, actually, that sounds about right. That's exactly what people do. Holy shit, there's a giant fucking tornado coming. There's a huge tidal wave. I mean, if there's a tidal wave coming, what are you going to do? Unless you're running upstairs, you're going to drown. So, like, you know, you might as well just watch it happen, I guess. But, like, people have no sense of, like, fuck, let me get in my basement or some shit. It's like, yeah, no, I'm just going to stand there until I get, like, hit with the fucking street sign or some shit. Like, we're not bright. People are not bright. Anyway. I heard a tornado landed on 10th Avenue. You've got to be kidding me. I can't get home then. The buses aren't moving, too. I wonder if the underground rail is moving. Hey, did you see that board fly? We better find shelter. Los York, Washington, and Baltimore experiencing abnormal weather. This isn't because of Auntie, is it? Yeah, I bet. Suddenly, the sky fills with light. Hey, look! Yeah, no, I'm sorry. This is like aliens now. No, this is when you run. A UFO? What did I just say? <laughs> Shit. I mean, it's not as a god, but like... Huh? I look up to see light shining through the dark clouds. From the light appeared... Raul? What the... In the sky is... Raul? What in the... Now he's turning the light off. As I stand there with my mouth open, all the lights in Lost York begin to flicker eerily. Suddenly, Raul's figure appears on the street monitor. As Alexander the Great. I can't wait to see what he's wearing. Oh! I can't put the thing down. This is just... Look at his outfit! Look at his hair! <gasps> Raul with long hair! Can we get a CG with him? Oh my god, like this. Anyway. I can't do... Ra like, Raul's voice can't be Alexander's voice, but it's gonna have to be sort of similar, because, like, I can't give him a whole new voice. Anyway. Hark! I'm Alexander! I've returned from Hades! I shall rule this world from this instant. He looks so good, though. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. Heed my words. I'm the king to rule all mankind. I mean, you have the power of the gods behind you, so... All right. Is this where we make the really inappropriate comments? You know, like Loki telling people to kneel and, like, the lady, the news lady, to, like... Have you seen that? <laughs> Like, Tom Middleston was, like, in an interview on, like, a red carpet or something, and he, I think they asked him about, like, being Loki or whatever, or, like, it, it, he made a comment about, like, oh, if I was Loki, I can make people kneel, and the woman goes, you don't have to be Loki to make me kneel or something, and he just kind of, like, laugh. oh, like, it took him a second to figure, like, oh, <laughs> how inappropriate that is, and that's all that sticks in my brain when he's, like, I'll be your king, I mean, I'll worship you, sure, um, okay, Raul. <laughs> 
I mean, Alexander. <laughs> like, sure. All right. I'm down. <laughs> what are my choices? Uh, okay. Huh? Isn't that rule aconite? Oh, wait. So this is some kind of shoot? I know. It must be for that upcoming movie, Goddess Upon the Camel Part 2. Of all the days to hold a shoot, wasn't that around Right Skirt Beach? I sure hope he's okay. Right Skirt Beach? I didn't notice it earlier because it happened so suddenly, but I do recall seeing a bridge in Raul's background. Okay, at first I was like, they, they think all of this is for a movie shoot, and then they're like, oh, Raul's at a movie shoot, and oh my god, I hope he's okay because of all this crazy weather. So, okay, they're not... I seriously thought for a second, they thought, oh, is all this crazy wind w weather and the tornadoes and shit a movie shoot? Wow, it's amazing. Hollywood isn't that good. <laughs> Do you think they put the CGI in after? This is not how it works. Woman gets hit by a cow flying there, and you're like, I mean, that's some really good CGI, lady. Like, what the fuck? I bet this weather's perfect right now. You know, get a shoot with all the strong wind and things. The director loves shooting those scenes, remember? Oh, yeah, I remember him saying that some of the actors got hurt because of taking shoots out in bad weather. I know what to expect from the movie, then. Neat way to advertise, if you ask me. It feels different, but I guess I should watch it when it releases. I mean, okay, if that's the way it works. Somehow these two are coming to terms with the situation. Seems like they think this is all a promotion for the movie with the lights flickering and Raul descending from the skies. Again, they're not the brightest crayons if they're like, this destruction is a movie. Of course, I know that's not true. I mean, I get, like, they're, they're like thinking like, oh my god, they're doing a movie promotion in the midst of this terrible weather. Like, crazy, ballsy of them, but like, cool. But they should still be like, but there is a tornado coming down the street and it's not movie magic, so we should get out of here. <laughs> Kind of forgot about that, I guess. After all, I saw Raoul become Alexander. Whatever the case, I know where Raoul is now. I need to go there as quick as I can. Not that there's something I can do now that I'm a human, but it's better I go than not. Hey, it's dangerous down there! I quickly took off toward Right Skirt, Be right Skirt Beach, which seemed to surprise the people around me. Really? They're all just standing on a street watching tornadoes and cars fly and lights flicker and signs moving, and they're worried about you running down the street? Maybe go inside, assholes. Worry about your damn self, Avenue Man. Number two. It's too dangerous down there. Run while you still can. That's what I'm doing. I'm running just into the eye of the storm. Everyone's telling me to stop, but not now. My love is there. I kept running straight for Right Skirt Beach. There were no cars around thanks to the strong winds. Yeah, the wind blew all the fucking cars off. A whole nother fucking chapter. Wow. I desire nothing. I reach for all. Holy fuck. That's cool. Ooh. Look at the lightning. Look at that fucking sailboat flying through the sky. Holy shit. <sighs> Holy crap. I hear the thundering waves from here. I glance toward the storm above the ocean as I finally arrive to discover Raul and Auntie standing on Silvergate Bridge. Raul! You again. Do not call me by that name. No, I refuse to stop. You're Raul. Raul Aconite. That's your name. Silence. My name is Alexander. I'm the proud king of Macedonia. Macedonia's... Does it exist anymore? I don't think it does. I don't know. You're dead, Alexander. Get over it. Raul's clad in Alexander the Great's armor that he had in his home. That does not look like the armor he had in his home. That's, like, sexier, but, like... His angry face. Like, oh! I like how it's still just Raul's hair, but then they just kind of made it longer. <laughs> still, like, glorious. Man. The armor clanks coldly with each movement. Alexander's like, I mean, I picked a good body to be reborn into. This one's sexy. Right? Uh -huh. You're so stunning. I knew that would look perfect on you. I'm so glad I had it excavated. Auntie, you made Raoul's dad find it? Well, of course. It's my duty as a god to guide humans, you know. I'm going to guide you right off the bridge. I've kept watch over him since the day he was born. 
I was the one who saved him from the oysters, too. You know, and actually, now that makes sense. Because he was like, I was pretty sure Neptune saved me. And they were like, why the fuck would Minerva save you? And like, okay, she was just hanging. She saved him because she was like, someday I'm going to boink you. A little creepy, but you know. I mean, I didn't even think of that. Like, he made the comment about her and the, the oysters, like, while we were in Celestia, and then all that shit happened. He's Alexander the Great, and I just totally forgot about the oyster situation. But now that they bring it up, you're like, mm, okay. But it was so annoying how long it took for you to realize you loved him. I guess that Greek atmosphere really worked wonders. Greek atmosphere? She's referring to the ruins Raul and I went to. I see... So the sudden discovery of the ruins and that four-wheel drive and even the manticore was... I mean, that we knew. We were simply being played with by you all along, Auntie. Oh, but the ground crumbling away wasn't me. I would never take such a dangerous risk with Raoul. I just wanted you two to enjoy the adventure and safety and help your love start to bloom. Of course, the last part was totally unexpected, so I led you two out of there. It was like being at Universal Land, right? So, the... She saved us at the end, so the manticore and everything else. What the fuck was that about, then? You know? But it is kind of sad. She's like, I wanted your love to bloom so I could destroy you. That's so awful. <laughs> like, I mean, she doesn't have it out for us. Any Cupid would have come along and she did it on the same shit. Because she wanted the arrows to bring him back. But, like... So I'm just guessing then, like she said, the last Cupid she killed by accident. And we've been around for a long while. It's probably because Alexander was reborn at some point, And then she was like, uh, oh, try And it just didn't, like, it was the timing issue. Like, trying to be like, okay, I need to get... Cupid out of the way to get the arrows to stab whoever the hell Alexander was born into and then all of a sudden I killed Cuba by accident. Fucking I didn't get the arrows in time in the or then Alexander dies and then he's reincarnated and then you have to wait. So she's been doing she's been playing the long game. I mean I kinda hate her right now because she's still my boyfriend. But I kinda love her because like, man, she's got the patience of a saint. She's been like in it to win it for a while for her true love. And I can't you can't blame a woman for it. I am really upset that Minerva's evil, though, because I really love her. She was kind of amazing. I just want her to be her kooky auntie, and she's now, like, a psycho. Oh, well. <laughs> I still love her character, and I can't blame her for it. I'm not like, God damn it, I hate you so much. It's like, I mean, I can under... I mean, I'm mad at you. Don't get me wrong. And I not don't like you in this route, but, like... I mean, I'm pretty just... I feel for you that you waited so long and you've been trying to do this for so many years and so many iterations of Alexander being reborn. It just happens, it just so happens to suck that you stole my boyfriend, you know? But if we had fallen, isn't it very weird though? She's like around her chin and her like the strap from her hat and her hair, like right in that area, like you can see the pixels. They're not really clean put over the background. It's like or like she was a background of something and then they tried to erase it like in Photoshop and then it just they didn't clean up those lines. It just looks really fucking weird and it's very distracting. Anyway, um, like, I don't know that that made me lose my train. of thought. So but then I'm just curious because I, I, I would still assume she didn't need us to be in love with Raul. We had to be in love with anybody. So again, in every other route, Raul could have just disappeared because she could have stabbed him. But then again, Alexander wouldn't be like, I'm taking over the world! We would have seen that. So then she didn't get the arrows to stab him, you know, in any other route. Hmm. Well, we're just going to have a conversation with be like, Raul, remember who you are! And we'll kiss him and then he'll remember because, like, love. You know, anyway. <laughs> Lady Minerva's smiling with glee. There isn't a hint of malice in her words. You were just a tool to the end. You won't get away with this! Why did you do all this? I kind of want to ask why she did all this, but like, hold on. It's probably you won't get away with it. Yeah, you won't get away with this. You won't get away with this! You're not going to get away with this! And how exactly are you going to stop me? Everything I did was in the name of love. 
I bet you'd do the same if you were in my shoes, Cupie. I don't need anyone to approve of what I've done as long as I have him. You're like, you're right. I would do exactly the same thing, and I'm going to find a way to fucking kill you and take back my man. I like that we're fighting over the same man. It's kind of fun. She smiles with a hint of sadness and gently places her hand onto Raul. No, Alexander's arm. So, like, in other routes, you know, when they, or other games where they have, like, the other girl that you're trying to steal your boyfriend away from. Oh, my God. Like, whatever. <laughs> She's always such a fucking twat. It's never, like, oh, we're kind of rivals, but, like, you like that other character. You're, like, whatever. You're, like, nah, fuck that bitch. She's always some kind of awful. She treats him like shit, and we're saving him from her. Or, like, whatever. You know what I mean? You're supposed to hate. It's, like, this, uh, hate between the two girls over this guy and this one like yeah we're gonna duke it out with minerva for a man but like you kind of respect minerva anyway you're like i mean i respect the hustle and i understand why she did it and there's a part of you that's like well no i mean i want him i'm gonna take him but at the other hand if like for some reason we got a bad ending and she got to be with raul you're like i mean he is the reincarnated soul of her long lost love so like you can't really blame her for what she did <laughs> still taking him back but I can have some feelings for you. Like, I feel for you. And, like, you know, you're right. I would do the same thing. And I'm gonna. Because you took my the soul away from my man. Anyway. Say, Alexander, could you order me around like you did before? If you want, I can create storms and torrents even stronger than now. After all, I'm Minerva, the goddess of wisdom and war. What the fuck is Mars the god of? I thought he was the god of war, but anyway. Like you did before. Create storms and torrents. Wait. Don't tell me you're the one causing all this, Auntie. And this is how I helped the Greek soldiers back during the Trojan War. Fun fact, I can control the weather better than Mars. Auntie flutters her hand elegantly. Suddenly, large drops of rain fall from the sky. She's truly fit to be one of the DC. Cupid has no chance against her. And worse, I'm just a human without those arrows anymore, too. Now then, Alexander, I am your slave. Command me. I mean, Raul dressed like that, I might say the same thing. Very well, I ask you this. Is there a way to decimate the foolish mortals of this world? If there are no foolish mortals, who's going to worship you, bro? Decimate? Hmm. Your wish is my command. How about I cause a flood, then? You know, like Noah. Noah didn't cause the flood, but I get what she's saying. Like Noah. There really are stories of massive floods and folklores all around the world. That might have been true. Do you remember the massive flood? Hi, what you doing, buddy? Hi. He's a cutie, a cutie, birdie, boo. Mwah, give me kisses, because I love you. So there really was a flood that great that happened before? Is that what she's implying to do? Um, yes, because there was proof in the freaking like, ground. Like, that's not part of myth. That was actually, like, do you see the lines here in the rocks? Like, that's, you know. That's archaeological factoids. Not because a god caused it. But you know what I mean. Sorry. Stop it, auntie! I thought gods were supposed to protect the humans. If you end up killing them, then you have no right to call yourself a god. I'm sorry, but this is what he wants to happen. I recall learning that Alexander the Great was born sometime around 350 BC, which means that Auntie kept him in her mind for just about 22,350 years. There's no way I can fathom her love. But that doesn't give me a reason to back off. I don't want to lose to her. Well, it's not only because she stole your boyfriend who you're in love with. She also is going to destroy the world, which is kind of fucked up, so... Alexander, why do you want to kill the other humans? You're a human yourself. Do not call me a human, child. I'm born of Zeus himself. I carry the blood of both Achilles and Hercules. No, you fucking don't. I dare you say that to him. You're just making that up. This world's gone mad. As king, it's my solemn duty to return all to its right form. Such unsightly light's not needed. I, as king, am the only one who sh... Only one to shine brilliant to the people. Alexander points to the shining bridge. I guess the unsightly light he's referring to is electricity. The light of civilization. 
a source that humans discovered and put to use for civilization. Calling that unsightly is completely wrong. I will revive Macedon and rule the world. In order to do so, the foolish must be weeded. Well, then you're going to really have to kill everyone, I guess, so. Like, unbelievable. Oh, you're so cool. You haven't changed a bit since your campaign in the East. Wait. You knew me back from my expedition to the East? For some reason, Alexander's frowning at Auntie. He fixes his eyes on her. Of course! I was by your side the whole time. You might not remember yet, but our days of being in love will come back to you. Love? You? Alexander frowns sternly as if he's trying to remember something. His awakening must have been unstable. Maybe he hasn't fully taken over yet. Yeah, you're like, huh, he doesn't remember being in love with you. Maybe I can make him remember being in love with me! If so, now's my chance. One wrong move and I'm sure I'm going to lose Raoul forever. I need to sway him right now. I take a step forward. Raoul! My name is Alexander. No, it's Raoul Aconite. Please, Raoul, remember me. You're not Alexander anymore. I close in on Raoul with no support. I'm not a god and I don't have my divine artifact. All I can do is talk. Well, if he smites you and throws you into the ocean and kills you, at least you won't have to, like, live in this world or live without him. I'm just saying. You know, it's not a good ending, but it's not the worst. <laughs> my winds are making it hard to hear my voice. I yell out with all my might to fight the wind. Raul, you're the one who said you loved me, Cupid. Please, remember who you are. Silence, child. Raul, no, Alexander the Great draws his sword and points it toward me. His blade gleams viciously, but I hold my ground and look straight into his eyes. I'd be like, fine, kill me. I'd rather die than be without you, Raul. I don't know whether my voice will bring him back, but I want to meet Raul again, so... Say, Raul... You told me that you like Alexander the Great, and you like him more than Achilles. I like Achilles' achievement during the Trojan War. Oh, I like, sorry. But if I had to choose my fave, it'd absolutely be Alexander the Great. And then you're going to tell him, you were Alexander the Great in a prior life, and then you tried to kill me, and all this shit happened. He's like, yeah, I don't think I like Alexander the Great anymore. He sounds kind of like a dick. Yeah. For a mythology nerd, I was surprised to learn you idolized actual people. But I guess it was because you were Alexander the Great in your past life. Kind of interesting they bring up past life stuff on this. I smile and take another step forward. Alexander the Great still has his sword pointed at me. Do not come any closer. Well, I've been a big fan ever since my dad brought me this armor. It's my dream to portray Alexander the Great in a movie. Well, you're doing it in real life. You mentioned that you wanted to play as Alexander as a Sillywood actor. To think you were Alexander all along. It's a shame he died from malaria at the young age of 32. Otherwise, he might have gone on to conquer the entire world. I bet society would have been way different if he'd had a longer life. I wouldn't actually mind seeing that world. <laughs> yeah, you would. Yeah, you would, because this one sucks a little. It sucks a bit. You even said things might have changed if he didn't die from malaria, and that you wanted to see the, the world what the world was like had he survived. Malaria. Lies. Hi, Alexander. Die from malaria? Raoul told me cheerfully that the world may have been different with you around. He wanted to see the world that you would create, Alexander. I perished in war, not from malaria. No. Alexander's face warps in pain. He's starting to falter. Shh, no. What was that strange drink? I drank that and... Say, Raoul, you're a silly wood star. No matter who you played, you would never lose yourself. The Alexander here isn't the great king of Macedon, Macedon that you looked up to. Raoul, get a hold of yourself! Were you looking up to some puny, ruthless ruler who wants to abuse the power of gods? Alexander the Great winds his eyes. Me? Puny? Child... How dare you? Humans who defy kings are not needed in this world. I must show my power as the true king of the mortals. Alexander the Great regains his composure and then lets out a bold smile. I'm looking at Raoul, but the expression holds no semblance of Raoul's features. His innocent and sunny eyes are gone. 
and in place as an expression befitting of an overlord to rule the world. I failed. My words weren't strong enough to bring Raoul back. My vision blurs from the tears in my eyes. Raoul, please. Be gone! Alexander the Great takes a step back and readies his sword. He then swiftly thrusts his blade. The blade makes its way into my aunt. Huh? Huh? I brace for the worst with Alexander's thrust, but instead the sword impales Auntie's shoulder. Auntie? Auntie's looking at Alexander with a confused look on her face. W what? Alexander? What's going on? Interesting. I'll never forget what you've done, Minerva. You made me drink that horse dung of a medicine. Horse dung of a medicine? No, and that was a special concoction I came up with to give you everlasting youth and life. Of course I forgot how frail humans are, so it sort of destroyed your immune system, too. You destroyed his immune system? Wait, that means Alexander the Great fell to malaria because of the medicine you made, Auntie? Hey, come on! Even the gods make mistakes every once in a while. I would not have died if you didn't administer me that. I could have ruled the world if you didn't meddle. Alexander angrily pulls out the impaled sword. With nothing to hold her up, Auntie falls to the ground. Auntie, are you all right? I rush toward Auntie as she looks at me with a pale face. <laughs> I'm not doing great if I'm being totally honest. <laughs> I love her. The bitch stole my man, but I still love her. Auntie looks at Alexander with a soft expression. I still love you. Auntie lets out her last words before dropping her head to the ground. Did he actually kill her? Wow, shocking. Auntie! Auntie's sleeping with the most happiest look on her face. Love is truly blind, I see. I bet she's euphoric being stabbed by Alexander. Hey, does it, is she passed out or is she dead? Like... The storm, tornado, and strong winds all subside, probably because Auntie is knocked out cold. Okay, she's not dead, she's just out. The ocean's quiet again as we look at each other's face in awe. Alexander the Great then turns his sword toward me as I crouch on the ground. You're next. His bold voice is nothing like Raoul's voice. His madness is being directed toward me. It's gonna kill me if I don't do something, kiss him. I flip over my unconscious aunt and take the Cupid bow and arrow necklace hanging around her neck. I stand up and focus my energy to my artifact. I'm not sure whether I can use it because I'm a former Cupid, now turned human. But I've been using my artifact for, a hundred, for hundreds of years. So please, please answer me. Cupid's bow grows in response to my voice. What? Alexander takes a step back, seeing me with my bow. I look straight at him as I knock my arrows into the bowstring. Yes, I knock Cupid's two arrows, the golden arrow and the leaden arrow. There's one other thing I could do after all, and this is it. There is one other thing I could do. There's one thing I could do after all. That's what she said. <gasps> this is so cute, though. I mean, I get like... Raul is so angry. I wanted a CG with him as Alexander with the hair, but like, it was like, he's all angry with his sword. And we're like, ah, but like, you know, but I still kind of love it. It's got the drama that like, freaking <laughs> Bumble pig. <shit. laughs> she really goes off the rope. Honestly, like for some reason after the trans four cars episode, like, and that, even this, you're like, I feel like if we did this one, I would have been like, this is so, I still think the transformer shit was still the most fucking insane, like, the most insane fucking shit we've done in this game. Like, because as you're like, okay, he was Alexander in a past life, and I'm like, okay, like, I don't know, it's, like, almost believable in the realm of, like, gods and shit in this game, but, like, there's, he built a transforming robot car that punched Mars in the face. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's the most outrageous fucking thing, the first outrageous thing that happened that it just sticks with you. But, you know, still, this game is just, I don't know if it was ever on the rails. I feel like it was just teetering precariously and you think it's on the rails, but it was never going to stay there. It was just 
It was always a little dangerous. I position both arrows when suddenly a strong wind blows around us. Oh, 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 we're over time. Anyway, what? Uh. My hair sways in the wind and I feel gravity pulling my body down. I can tell all of this is a sign that I'm doing something forbidden. But if this is what my aunt did to bring out Alexander's personality, then that means I can bring Raoul's back too. I'm gonna let my arrows loose. I grip my teeth as I hold the bow and arrows in position, but they're putting up a fight. Playing with someone's soul must be a grave sin. My arrows, my bow, and my soul as Cupid is trying to stop me from letting the arrows loose at once. I'm the 87th Cupid, a lowly god that can easily be replaced. Unlike my aunt, who's a member of the DC, I'm weak enough for the bow and arrows to resist me. But I do my best to pull the string. Raul, listen to me. I pull the string with all my might and focus my power. I want him back. Failure is not an option. Raul, I didn't initially like you very much. You're a silly wood actor who took girls lightly. You were someone I couldn't accept as Cupid. You're the god-loving obsessed parasite. You kept rambling strange and weird things, so I didn't want you to find out I was Cupid. Alexander fights the wind and takes a step forward. He raises his bloody sword. Silence! But you didn't change a bit, even after knowing I was Cupid. You didn't hide your curiosity, and you didn't revere me as a god. You were Raoul, the obsessed parasite. You were always full of questions for me, but you also knew when you were getting out of hand. Silence! Silence! You treated me like a normal human girl. You honored my feelings of wanting to be a human in this world. You told me you wanted to be with me, regardless of whether I'm a god or not. What are you saying? Do not get in my way! Alexander the Great looks just like Raoul, and now he's trying to kill me. His bloody sword slowly comes down on me. I maintain my stance despite the ominous tip of the blade coming in front of my eyes. Please, I want him back. I don't mind being killed by him, so please. You told me you love me because of who I am, which is why I fell in love with you too. So please, come back to me! I let loose both my golden and leaden arrows just when his blade grazes my forehead. Please, divine gods. Doesn't matter whether the god is from Greek, Norse, Japan, anywhere. Also, all the generations of Cupids, please lend me your power. Raul, come back! Does he come back? Well, that's a perfect place to end it. No, look! It's Raul! I mean, you know he's gonna come back. Come on. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this part up here, and uh, yeah. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.